Testosterone, testosterone, one, two, three. <laughs> Right, for anyone who's heard me speak before, I always apologise because uh, I just do because there's not going to be a beginning and a middle and an end to this speech. I wish there was. I tried. I've even made notes on a pizza board that I got from the shop yesterday. There's a story now, but I love going off in tangents. How good is it that like yesterday when I went to a supermarket, I actually complained to the staff, I was like, where's the vegan pizza? You know, like, we're getting somewhere and we're moving on, you know, look at, and they, they give me pizza and I've made my notes on the pizza and I thought, right, I never get a beginning in the middle and an end, but I do, it goes round a bit, so we'll see how we get on. <laughs> and in that vein, I want to, hey, here we go. Just so I can sit, say I did it by the end, I want to give you a, the opening, lines to a poem and I'm going to finish off my speech with the same poem and I think I've read this poem out before on World Day it's called Ode to a Mouse by Robbie Burns beautiful poems that man wrote beautiful gentle heart and he wrote the poem he was going along one day in his field and he was plowing the um he was harvesting the wheat and he he, he, he cut his side across the wheat and he damaged a, a mouse's nest and it's the poem about that, basically an apology and a little discussion he had with the mouse. The reason it's, I, I, I picked this, because most animal experiments are, are, are conducted on mice now, and I'll go into this later when I, when I conclude in a roundabout way. So here's the opening paragraph. Small, crafty, cowering, timorous little beast. Oh what, oh what a panic is in thy breast. You need not start away so hasty with your hurrying scamper. I would be loath to run and chase you with murdering plow stuff. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes you startle. Think about that. He's apologizing to the mouse for we broke the social union and and that, that, he's apologising for making that mouse startle. Yet in Oxford today, hundreds of thousands of mice are suffering terrible, terrible nightmares. I'm going to finish off the last paragraph with that at the end. Right. I've been involved in a move for decades now, nearly four decades. And it's a shame to see how vivisection has slid down. Our, our sphere of attention. The animal liberation movement was begun on the horrors of vivisection, but we've let it slide. Isn't it brilliant? Like I said, now we can go to the supermarket and I can complain about there not being a vegan pizza. And some people used to argue, look, we need to tackle factory farming because that's where the hundreds of millions are. But we never, we mustn't lose sight of the horrors of vivisection because there's something nasty, particularly nasty and cruel about vivisection. Tell me another job in the world and it will happen today in Oxford where people go into a room and they see any creature, a mouse, it's in the corner of its cage, it's watching itself, that timorous wee beastie, it's frightened, it's ill, it's dying. Tell me a job in the world where they go in and they make it worse. I'll tell you one of a job that I know of. A torturer, say in some Saudi Arabian state or in a rendition centre. They'll go in the room, someone is carrying, someone's please don't hurt me. They've already got their teeth out and they'll get the pliers and they'll take their fingernails out. This is the level of vivisection. Vivisection shocked Victorian society. When there was a few mud professors knocking nails, knocking up, uh, putting dogs across tables and doing it publicly, it shocked Victorian society. If you'd have had a demonstration in Victorian England, there would have been 5,000 of us here. There was massive controversy about it. That's why we have people like you mentioned Lord Dowden. People were shocked when vivisection took place openly. And what have they done? Just surrounded themselves in secrecy and closed doors and barbed wire. But in the 70s, we smashed those doors down. We broke that secrecy. Undercover investigations and smashed that secrecy. And when we exposed it, my God, it's shocking. You cannot compare animal abuse, but there's 
something sick, Gandhi called it. Imagine the crimes that Gandhi witnessed. He called vivisection the blackest of all crimes. We've got to put it back up. We've got to put it back on our attention. And that's why we can't just have a world day for animals. Let's keep it posted now because the way we communicate isn't to each other. And it's through social media. I won't complain about that now because I've got sucked into it myself. But let's, get, let's do it on a world day. Keep vivisection in there in our posts. It's what began. It's what got people started in the Victorian times against, against vivisection. And it's what rebirthed the animal rights movement. When Ronnie Lee got sentenced, put in prison in the early 70s, it was for experiment, for, it was for liberating mice. Maybe if he'd have been in prison for, for liberating dogs, people would understand it. But people were shocked. Hang on, someone's gone to prison here because they care about mice. What's this all about? I've known people that joined the movement. Mel knows him, a guy called Mike Dunn. I went to prison with him for raiding laboratories. He used to run a chain of butcher shops. And someone gave him a leaflet one day, vivisection, he thought, this isn't true, this can't be happening. And it's happening and it's happening today and I wish I could give you some good news I'll give you some good news in a minute but vivisection is increasing when me and Mel joined the movement there were 6 million animals being killed through direct action through smashing those doors down through loads of us going to prison through Barry Horn dying on a hunger strike about vivisection we brought the numbers down to 3 million fucking numbers one, one death is a statistic, is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistics, but vivisection figures are going back up again. I was hoping I was going to see maybe three, four, five, six, seven thousand people here today, but we'll do with what we do, and we'll, make, we'll wake Oxford today, but we've got to bring vivisection back in, and we've got to stop it, and none of this is in my bloody notes. <laughs> stop in a minute, um, but I could go on for bloody hours. If anyone wants me to come to your town and do a talk about anything, vivisection, Buddha, yoga, please ask me or come. Come to my house. I will. I'm like a slapper. If you invite me, I'll do it. I'm not forgetting. Whoa. Hey. Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh. Right, here we go. Just want me two little bits now. Before I do, ah, oh, beginning, middle, and end. No. This is an investigation a couple of years ago into Imperial College London. It identified, because vivisection proper closed doors, MPs, police have got no access to it. They happen to be a report here because they had an ethics committee. Oxford has got nothing like that. This report it identified a lack of adequate operational leadership, mannership training, supervisory and ethical review systems. Basically, it was an hellhole under no management at all. So let me read you something out that, that I found about Oxford University yesterday. Oh, it's not even there. But I do remember what it said. Basically, it's from the British Medical Journal. And it basically says, as we know, animal testing is often full of inaccuracies, faulty methodology. And what they're talking about is a study that Oxford University did, and they wanted funding for a new vaccine. And you think they'd be particularly careful to do with the vaccine, considering all the controversy about um, vaccines. But what they did, they did their animal experiments like they did. And interestingly enough, when you read this report, because vivisectors, when I say they're not stupid, they lack common sense, they lack a heart, but they're intelligent people. Vivisectors, this is the key, vivisectors know that animal experiments do not work. When you are sick, if you have children, you do not take your children 
to a veterinary hospital. This is experimental on a mouse. We'll not tell you what's going to happen to a rat. But what Oxford University did, and they contacted it, contracted it through Port and Down, the military research people. Does anyone put your hand up in here if you don't know what where Port and Down? Have you ever heard of Port and Down? Anyone not heard of it? Burn it. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Yes. It's a military research establishment where they do unbelievable things. They do unbelievable things here. What Oxford University did, they did these animal experiments into these vaccines and they got some positive, they got some negative results. They ditched the negative results. And do you know what they did? They entered that vaccine into poor communities into South Africa and they lied to the parents. They said, we've done animal experiments and they proved that they are safe. And they knew that some of the animal experiments so they weren't safe. But the villain sectors know that they've got a point here actually because they weren't lying to the parents of the babies but they were completely misleading them. And that's what animal experiments were at the start of the century, sort of last century. When Victorian Britain, you had the RSPCA set up. A society was shocked about vivisection. It was a few mad professors nailing dogs to tables. People like Descartes who said, that's what science did. There's nothing wrong with science. I'm into yoga. Yoga's a science. But when you start calling things it, like this, this bench that I'm, that I'm standing on, you could say it's an it. You can measure it. You can take it apart. But what science began was to apply it to trees and animals and then it becomes just nonsense and cruelty. But all the stuff, all the food additives, all the pesticides, all the noxious chemicals that the, that the pharmaceutical and the oil industry, it was the oil industry that wanted uh, animal experiments and they started in the 20th century. They wanted to flood the, pro the market with toxic products. Hey presto, you can prove anything you want from one of experiments. Anything you want. You can, you can prove it safe if you use it on a mice or save it on play, safe if, or dangerous if you use it on a rat. Animal experiments are lies. When you look into what George Bernard Shaw said that anyone who wouldn't hesitate to vivisect would hardly hesitate to lie about it. And that's what's happening in Oxford. I'm going to finish in a minute because we've got we've got to hurry up. No, we don't have to hurry up. <laughs> I've got five minutes. <laughs> Two. <laughs> the liars. Dirty fingers and dirty pies. I'll tell you about this piece of cloth in a minute. I'm not, I've got a problem with science. I like science. But science without a heart, yoga's a science. Tried and tested. Does what it's second said on the packet. Promotes health. Promotes life. Encourages life. Has non-violence at him or its core. But what happens when you just take the violence out? I posted some animal abuse on my Instagram page last night. I never post animal abuse footage. But, but today was coming up. And then this guy, this tar, sort of ties in with something. Finally, I'm going to tie something together. And it's uh, an undercover investigation. Every under, every, every under, undercover, every undercover investigation that you'll ever find at abuse places, places, factory farms. You'll get it in old people's homes. And you'll always get it in vivisection laboratories. It's not just worse than what you thought. It's always worse than what you thought. Because you'll see amazing in cruelty that you won't see on the streets behind closed doors very important when cruelty and science got together behind closed doors lethal combination and what you see on the Huntington video cruelty yelping the animals are dying and being poisoned but you'll also see utter callous brutality you see the workers picking the dogs up those dogs have got one defense those beagles beagles are used not for a scientific reason because they're passive nature because they're gentle and they don't bite. You can see the beagles being picked up, shaken, full on punches to the face. You're fucking, I'm getting fucking angry now. You're annoying me. It's shocking. But the normality of it in that room when the other people are looking on. They're just looking on, it's normal. And it happens today in Oxford University. That's why I don't care how we do it. And Oxford University, I don't know if we could raid it anymore. It's so secret. We tried to stop this new centre being built. Mel went to prison for a bloody long time for it. Barry died and look, we've got to stop, smash those doors down. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we've got to do it. Now those scenes, I was in India. The home, to me, India, the home of the animal liberation 
give her a bit. I was in the Himalayas, I went to a temple, I went to a Buddhist temple. And I was explaining to this lovely monk about the work I was involved in. And I explained to him about vivisection. And I was actually explaining to him about the scenes I just told you about, where they get these dogs and they inject poison into them nine times a day. Those dogs try and wiggle. Those dogs get punched and screamed at. And I was telling this to this Buddhist, and do you know what he said? He said, oh, the poor people. And I thought, no, 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 this is a translation error. These are monsters. These are cruel people. These are monsters. And he said, oh, again, he went, oh, I feel so sorry for those dogs, but I feel even more sorry for the people. I had no clue what he was on about. I've studied Buddha and yoga since then, and I understand it. This will sound strange, right? And he gave me this, to stand outside and to dump. <laughs> And he wanted me to chant, I'm Tari to Tari Swaha, which just means it's a prayer to the mother. It's a prayer that we will win through non-violence and compassion. And he wanted me to direct it at the villa sectors. He wanted me to spread love to the villa sectors. And I understand that now. The word, that word love, with the, what's he on about? Go to you, would you, would you, little vivisector? No, vivisectors have got coming to them, what they've got coming to them. The laws of karma work. But I hope that all vivisectors get out of that violence. I hope that all vivisectors one day be happy. The way they'll be happy is to leave that torture lab. It will destroy them. There are no happy hunters, there are no happy rapists, and there are no happy vivisectors. So I wish happiness on those vivisectors. And the way they do that is to leave, don't leave the lab, take the animals out of the lab and turn the labs, what they should be, into real science. Now we're going to head off in a minute and I want to do what I said I was going to do, which is finish my speech up in a circular way. There's so many things I haven't said, but la la la. I saw Mel looking around before the clouds, because good old Mel here, if any of the, I tell you what, if the police and special branch, if there's someone they want behind bars, it's this man, he has to be so careful, he's on a tightrope all the time, he's just come out of prison a few years ago, they'd love to see you back when they vote, hey? <laughs> and that's why you do belong, let's face it. Put your hands together for it. Yes. Shouting up, we gotta go. I saw Mel looking at the clouds before, because he just turned up. No, he doesn't want it to rain, because he put lots of arrangements in there. I said this once a day. Think about this: hundreds of thousands of animals are in our laboratory. We're going to and mice, mainly mice, but they'll never feel this wind. They'll never feel a drop of rain. So if it does rain today, who gives a shit? We can cope it. Enjoy the rain. Think of the billions, hundreds, yeah. hundreds, hundreds of millions of chickens who never feel a drop of rain in this country. What a scandal. And wow, whoa, we've got a lot of hard work ahead of us. We stand on the shoulders of giants, of previous animal liberation campaigners, and we've got to, we've got to do more. Right, here's the last paragraph. So it's his little prayer to the mouse, and it ends like this. Still thou art blessed compared with me. How beautiful. Rather than that story of science. Of, of Gandhi was once asked, what do you think of Western civilization? And he said, I think it would be a very good idea. <laughs> what about Robert Bruce saying to the mouse, you're blessed compared with me. The present only touches thee. But oh, I backward cast my eye. Oh, prospects drear. He looks back at his dreary life, but then he says this to the mouse. And how was he to know about the nightmare? They call Oxford the town of dreamy spires. It's a place of nightmares. Let's wake up Oxford today. But listen how he, fi listen how he finishes his poem to this mouse. Oh, forward though I cannot see, I guess I'm fear. And he was right to fear the future for those mice, because it's a nightmare. Oxford is one of the world's black.
the parts of vivisection when you go on demos now we're used to getting a lot of public sympathy when we do the animal rights march in london you can feel the love and hopefully people will feel the love but let, let, let the people of oxford today also feel our anger and our heartbreak and you'll find a lot of snotty faces looking at you because basically let's cut the shit the oxford and cambridge the old boy network they're up their ass and they're arrogant but you don't fucking rule the hell of the world.